dudes, dude the builder here. In this episode of Zig and Death, we're going to be talking about the defer and er defer keywords in Zig. Uh, but first things first, I got to give a big thank you to Edmund Vorauer, who made a donation to the channel. Um, anybody else that wants to make a donation, you'll find a link in the description of the video. So once again, uh, thank you very much, Edmund, for the donation. Uh, the defer and er defer keywords in Zig. Uh, are basically uh, one of the foundations of how you can achieve uh, memory uh, management in Zig, um, guaranteeing that anything that you have to allocate will be properly freed when when the time is appropriate. And we're going to be seeing uh, an example of how to make uh, use of these two uh, important keywords uh, via demonstrating the functionality with a linked list example. We have a simple little uh, list here, struct, that has uh, an inner struct here of the node type, which will be the elements of the list. And uh, this uh, node type has only uh, two fields, the data, the actual data, which is going to be uh, U8, and the next uh, item in the list which is an optional pointer to a node itself okay so this is a self-referencing uh, data structure and that's why we have to use uh, indirection here a pointer and it's optional because in the case of the last item there is no next uh, item in the list so it would be null now here we're going to see an example of uh, what you could call a constructor, a term used in, in, in object-oriented programming. But it's basically a, a function that we can use to create uh, one of these uh, nodes, but uh, we call it create instead of init because we're going to be allocating a pointer to a node, and that's what we're going to be uh, returning, as you can see here in the return type. And the return type is an error union, as you can see here with the exclamation point, because we're going to be allocating and the allocation can fail. Okay, so what we're receiving here is an allocator and a data of a U8. And here, the first thing that we're going to be trying to do is to uh, precisely allocate the space in memory for a node. And we do that with the create method of the allocator. Um, and we assign it to this variable here self. Then we assign the data to the data field of self and uh, the next field we will be setting to null, okay? And then we return that pointer that we just allocated. Here, as I mentioned here in the comment, we don't have to use uh, defer or er defer because uh, basically if the allocation is successful and we have uh, allocated that space in memory and we obtain a pointer to it here in self, um, the, the other actions that are going to take place in this function before returning that pointer, none of them can fail. So in this case, we're just assigning, these are just two assignments of two values to two fields. And we don't have any code here that can fail, so uh, we don't need uh, to free in case of failure. And we also uh, are not going to free this uh, pointer because uh, that's what we want to return from the function. So neither defer nor er defer are needed in this function. Here we have an example of a deinit uh, function. Uh, that basically uh, takes in uh, an allocator and what we're going to do is we're going to iterate basically through the items in the list um, using here the the, the option, optional variant of the if uh, uh, statement here and what we're going to do is if we have a next item in the list we are uh, capturing the pointer because uh, next is an optional pointer to a node. And we first call the init on that uh, item, passing in the same allocator that we received. And then we destroy the pointer for that item. Okay, So basically, this will recurse through all of the items in the list, calling the init and destroying the pointers. Okay, Now, 
um, the list itself has uh, uh, is saving here the allocator that was used to um, create the list and also that it, that will be used to add all the items to the list we have a pointer to a node that's the head of the list and a pointer to a node that's the tail of the list okay and here we have an init method an init function that basically uh, returns uh, uh, an instance of this list type and it takes in an allocator and an initial data for the first node so that's why we have an error union return type because uh, we are going to allocate that first node and that can fail once again um, in this function we don't need defer nor err defer because uh, once that initial allocation happens here we don't have any code that can fail after that point okay so that's why we don't need uh, either of those and we will be returning this structure that has that uh, allocated uh, space so we don't want to free that uh, in this function okay now we have another uh, constructor here that is called init with slice and in this case what we're going to do is we're passing in a slice of u8s and we are creating a list with those items added um, uh, conveniently here in this uh, constructor so what we first do is we try to initialize the list here using our normal init uh, function and we pass in the first item of the slice which is slice zero and as we say here in, uh, in this comment we are using now er defer to call uh, the, the init uh, method here of the list uh, if we happen to encounter an error we want to make sure that any items that were added to the list will be properly freed okay so that's why we have err defer here this will only be uh, executed if we exit this function uh, in an error condition if uh, we exit the function on success then the, the init method won't be called and that's good because we want to return this list okay from the function so we only want to free the resources if an error occurs and uh, we need that error defer because here in this uh, for loop over the, the remaining items in the slice we will be calling the append uh, method okay and passing in each of the data items and that append method can fail so that's why we're using this try here so if one, any of those appends fails um, this error defer will kick in and we will clean up any of the items that were already previously added to that list in this process of adding uh, multiple items to the list okay and here uh, we finally if everything is okay we return the list okay and we're not gonna free anything because we want to return the list with the items we just added here we're gonna see uh, the, the init method for the list itself and basically what we're going to do is we're going to uh, call the init on the head first passing in the allocator instance that we have uh, saved here in, in self and then we will destroy that pointer because uh, uh, that head field is a pointer to a node and um, we're not doing this for the tail field because um, when we call this uh, the init on the head it will recurse as I said uh, when we saw the the init method uh, of the node uh, type and uh, that will take care of reaching the tail of the list and it will uh, deinitialize and free that uh, node so we don't have to call uh, the init on the tail and we do we also don't have to destroy that pointer because it will be handled by the recursion of calling uh, the init on the head of the list okay now here we have a simple little append method that uh, here um, creates a node and once again we don't need any uh, defer or er defer even though we're allocating here because uh, we don't have anything that can fail after the allocation okay and 
Here we have a contains uh, method, which will tell us if um, um, a data item is contained in the list. It's basically a lookup method. And what we're doing is we're taking advantage of the recursive nature. We're setting this variable current here to the head. Uh, the type here is important because we want to use the optional modality of the while loop, okay, here, which will uh, break out of the loop if we reach a null. So uh, we, we have to specify here that this is an optional pointer to a node. And uh, while this current variable isn't null, we're going to capture the pointer, okay? And we're going to see if the data field is equal to this data that we're being passed in. And if it is, we're going to break true. Otherwise, we set the current uh, uh, variable to the next field of this current uh, node pointer. And we keep on uh, iterating. And uh, otherwise, if we reach the end of the loop without a break, we're going to return false. So here also we're using the while loop as an expression um, in the return statement here. Okay. And finally, we have a little print method that also uses the recursion uh, that we just saw to go through all of the elements of the list. Now in main, we create here, this is the normal code for our general purpose allocator here. And we use this init with slice uh, function here to initialize the list, passing in this slice of items here that we're um, literally specifying here in the source code and passing in that uh, allocator uh, instance from the GPA. And here uh, we are calling uh, the defer of the, the init method. And since we're using defer, this will be called unconditionally, uh, no matter if it's a successful exit from main or uh, an error condition, because uh, now we, we, we know that when we exit main, we have no further use for this list. So we can use defer to unconditionally call the init once we're done in the scope, which is basically the scope of the entire main function, okay? So um, once we have that created, we're going to try here to append. Okay, this can fail. That's why we're using try. And then we're going to make a series of debug prints here calling the contains method. Okay, to see if we have these items in the list. And uh, the last thing that we're going to be doing is calling that print method on the list. Okay. So if we move over here to this other terminal, we're going to see that uh, the result of calling the contains uh, method here three times is correct. And that print method of the list it effectively prints all of the items. Now, uh, one final thing I wanted to mention is that uh, defers, first of all, they happen uh, for the enclosing scope, not for the function uh they are defined in so that's the difference from example for for from uh the go defer in go defer applies to the function uh where it's called but in in zig it only applies within the scope okay uh where it where it's uh called so here this defer would only apply within this scope of this if uh statement here Okay, this block here that we have with these curly braces. And another thing that we have to be aware of is that defer um, basically has unwinding behavior when they are called. So they are called in reverse order. Here we have this debug print of that, that says defer one. And then after that, we have this debug print that says defer two, but they will be called in uh, reverse order as we see here in the output we have defer two before defer one, okay? So that's another important detail that, that's good to know. And also defer will not be uh, executed if it, it's never reached in the code. So here, since we have this literal false here, uh, the compiler can see that this defer will never be uh, executed. So uh, it, it doesn't uh, even factor in this call to defer and that's why we never see this output of a defer three okay as you can see here in our output and
And one last thing is, uh, in the case of Erdifer, you can uh, optionally capture the actual error that happened here by using this capture here syntax. So um, in this case, we print out a message where we are printing out the actual error that happened. So let's uncomment here this return error.boom, and this will cause this error defer to kick in, OK? So let's execute our program once again. And now we see that, in effect, before the first, the, uh, since the error defer was after the other defers, that's the first thing that's going to be executed. Uh, the other unconditional defers are executed even in the case of an error. But the error defer is only executed in the case of an error. And we have here the error.boom from the capture that we are printing out. And once we uh, reach the end of the output, then we have the normal zig error output here. And it's telling us that main returned uh, this error boom. And uh, it's indicating exactly where it happened here, the return error.boom. Okay. So if we comment that out once again, and let's clear the screen and we run the program, we see that the error defer does not kick in when there is no error condition. Okay. So that's basically what I wanted to cover in this episode um, about defer and error defer. Um, making good use of defer and error defer will basically guarantee that even in a manually memory managed language as is Zig, um, you will have a, a clean code, you won't have spaghetti code, and you will have a correct memory management because uh, whenever you allocate, you can use defer or err defer depending if the following statements uh, can fail, okay? And also depending if you want to return what you just allocated or if you have no more use for it, then you can use uh, an unconditional defer to free the resources. OK, so uh, I hope you find this useful. Uh, do the builder here. I'll see you in the next one.